What is a heat engine? A heat engine is the device that takes the motion of the molecules and turns it into something useful. Useful work. Useful ability to make something move. Could be an automobile. Could be a generator. We want somehow to be able to make things go. So, if I just took a bunch of gas, hot gas, it's moving in every different direction, and it's inside a box. Let's say one panel of that box could move, sort of like an automobile cylinder. Just the bottom moves in and out. So all those fast gas atoms, all of those things that are the products, the parts that are the more stable state, the things that gasoline turns into, the carbon dioxide and water molecules, all of them are moving really fast, and they're hitting all of the walls. But if only one of the walls can move, that means only that wall is doing useful work. That's the piston. That's the thing pushing. So how efficient do you think an engine like this would be? Well, the answer doesn't take a lot of math. There's six sides of the box and only one moves. Only one out of six of those molecules is doing useful work. The rest are just heating it up. And you know, an auto automobile engine is actually pretty close to one-sixth efficiency. Heat engines can come in many different types. You could have a steam engine. You can have the uh, normal automobile engine, which is an auto cycle. A diesel engine uses a diesel cycle, slightly different. You have a power plant, which uses a Brayton cycle. Their jet engines have yet other types of cycles. So these are different types of heat engines. There's a French engineer named Carnot that actually showed what the maximum efficiency for a heat engine could be. And he did it with a really simple thought experiment that I can reproduce for you here. So let's say first we have some source of heat. It'll be at temperature hot. And it can transfer heat to an engine, the heat engine. Now the heat engine does something useful makes a car go, a train, an airplane. The heat engine does a certain amount of work. Now right here, this looks great. We've got a hot temperature source. It's making an engine do work. <clears throat> of course, it also makes the engine warm. If your engine gets too warm, well, it can melt, and that's not good. So we have to take the heat away. We have to have a cold temperature reservoir. And this means that we are also going to have energy going from the engine to the cold temperature, the cold reservoir. If we make an equation now, we can see, since energy is balanced, that the heat in is equal to the work plus the heat out. Good. What does that have to do with efficiency? Let's think a minute by what we mean by efficiency. Efficiency is how well did we take that energy input, the burning the gasoline, burning the wood, burning the coal, how well did we use that energy and turn it into our useful work that we want the engine to do? So if I write an equation, I can say efficiency is equal to the work done divided by the heat in, Q in, Q hot, okay? If they were equal, if efficiency was equal to one, that's great, that's 100% efficient, that's an awesome engine. So, let's just do a little math. Let's take that first energy balance equation and subtract Q cold, the energy transferred to the cold, off of each side. We now will have Q hot minus Q cold equals work. Take that quantity and put it into my efficiency equation. So I now have Q hot minus Q cold divided by Q hot. Simplify it slightly. That is equal to one, because Q hot over Q hot is one, minus Q cold over Q hot. I have an expression for the efficiency in terms of how hot the, the heat was and how cold the cold reservoir is. I've been talking about heat but usually we talk about temperature. We talk about what is the temperature of the hot substance, what's the temperature of the cold substance. Fortunately, the heat transferred is proportional to
to the temperature. So this ratio of Q cold over Q hot is equal to T hot over T cold, because the proportionality constants cancel out. I can now rewrite my efficiency as 1 minus T cold over T hot. So you look at that math and you think, <coughs> how could I make this 100%? How can this equation equal 1? Well, that only happens if T cold is equal to 0. Well, what scale do I use? In the United States, actually this is winter right now, it could be very close to zero Fahrenheit. So if I'm driving around at zero, is my car 100% efficient? But what if I was in Europe and I use centigrade and it's around freezing, zero. And I drive my car around in Europe and it's freezing, am I at 100% efficiency? None of that makes sense. We've got to adopt a temperature scale that actually means something about molecular motion. And that's the Kelvin scale, the absolute scale, where absolute zero is no motion whatsoever. The only way to get a 100% efficient engine is if my cold reservoir was at absolute zero, which is not terribly practical and not terribly useful, but from a scientific point of view, that's what you would have to do. Otherwise, you just have to put in the cold reservoir, maybe that's the outside air for your car, and the hot temperature, the temperature at which the fuel and gases are combusted at, and you can put that in and get an efficiency. If we put those actual numbers in, we'll get a number that's probably a bit less than 50%. And that's the maximum efficiency we probably can get a car engine to work at. Of course, a car engine is not an idealized Carnot perfect cycle. It has a lot of imperfections, friction, wasted heat. And that's why it's more likely in the 20 to 25% efficiency at best.